Today we're going to be talking about infinitives, which can be found on these pages in Chapter 9. Let's introduce you to infinitives first. There are four different types of infinitives. We have simple infinitives, continuous infinitives, perfect infinitives, and passive infinitives. I've given you the formula for each and a example sentence next to it. As you can see, infinitives involve combining two plus a form of a verb. Now, we can also use not in front to give it a negative meaning. The form of the verb is going to change in each of these different types. So first, we're going to look at simple infinitives which is to plus the base form of the verb. So we have different ways to use simple infinitives. Here are the five different ways that we can use simple infinitives. Now I'm going to be talking about these five different ways in the following slides. First, infinitives function as nouns. Now, all verbs except modal auxiliaries have finitive forms. So I can take any verb to walk, to talk, to work, to speak, and I can turn it into an infinitive form. Um, I can do this with all ver verbs, again, except for modal auxiliaries. So all infinitives can be two words, like to work, or they can be part of a larger phrase, like to find a new job. Here are two se example sentences. I hope that he comes to work today. So here's my infinitive. And she needs to find a new job soon. So in these sentence, the infinitive is functioning as a noun. Now infinitives can follow some verbs. So verbs like agree, decide, expect, hope, intend, plan, and urge can only be followed by infinitives and never gerunds. Here are some examples, verb plus infinitive. I hope to find a new job. In this sentence, we have a verb plus your object plus your infinitives. Infinitive. We urge you to resign immediately. Urge is the verb, you is the object, and to resign is the infinitive. Here is another example of a verb plus object plus infinitive. They expect me to pay the bill. Expect is the verb, me is the object, to pay is the infinitive. Infinitives can be subjects or subject complements. Now, the infinitive as a subject is more common when using to get or to be. So, the most common form is going to be something that looks like this. It's impossible to get a promotion at that company. My goal is to get a promotion and my goal is to be a doctor. So these are the subjects of the verb. So this is the most common form. The less common form is when we Start the sentence with an infinitive. To get a promotion is impossible. To be a doctor, you have to work hard and get good grades. Once again, this is the most common form of using an infinitive as a subject or a subject complement, and this is the less common way. Now, there are some infinitives or some verbs that you can use as infinitives, as a subject or subject complements. Um, 
we have a limited, there's a group of limited verbs like to take, to cost, and to seem that can also be used as subjects or subject complements in the infinitive form. Infinitives can follow adjectives and nouns. Now, infinitives are used after adjectives and nouns to talk about people's feelings. Now, from the gerund video, gerunds can't come after adjectives. So here's an example of a infinitive following an adjective. So our adjective is afraid and our verb is don't be and our infinitive is to make. Now here's an example of an infinitive following a noun. I can't take the time to answer your question now. Can't take is your verb, time is your noun, and to answer is your infinitive. Now we also have something called purpose infinitives. Purpose infinitives are used when we want to express that there is a purpose or a reason for doing something. Now, native English speakers use purpose infinitives a lot. Generally, the phrase that we use with purpose infinitives is in order. So, the infinitive follows the phrase in order. Here's an example sentence. The company's factory was moved overseas in order to save money. In order is the phrase. To save is your infinitive. And so this is a purpose infinitive. What is the purpose of the factory being moved overseas? Well, to save money. Okay, so an order talks about a purpose or a reason for doing something. So again, the question is, what was the reason the company's factory was moved overseas? Well, to save money. Now, I can use other infinitives here. I could say to spend money. The company's factory was moved overseas in order to spend money or the company's factory was moved overseas in order to hire foreign employees. So I can change this infinitive. Now let's talk about continuous infinitives. Continuous infinitives are used to emphasize an ongoing activity. Now, when we see the word continuous, we know that it's ongoing and there's going to be a verb involved. And from our verb forms, we know that continuous generally means there's going to be an ing at the end of the verb. Now, the formula for continuous infinitives is to be plus present participle. Here's an example sentence. I hope to be watching TV when they announce the winner. So I have my infinitive here, to be, in red. And in bold letters, I have your present participle, which is watching. Now, continuous infinitives also have a time expression, usually. The time expression in this sentence is when. Now, what does this sentence mean? It means that I am waiting for them to announce the winner of a contest. Okay, maybe a game or a contest on TV. But I don't know when they're going to announce the winner. And they are going to make the announcement on TV. So I hope that when they announce the winner, I will be watching TV at, at that time. Now let's talk about perfect infinitives. Now here's the formula, to have plus the past participle. Perfect infinitives are used to show the difference in time between two events. Now, 
there's an event that happened before the time of the main verb. Okay, so here's my formula right here. To have plus the past participle made. Now the question is, what was made? Okay, so I have two events. The first event is that a large profit was made in the first three months of the year. And the second event is that the company reported the profits or the money that they made. So if I'm going to use a perfect infinitive, I start with the event that happened second. The company, re the company is reported to have made a large profit in the first three months of the year. The company is reported to have made a large profit in the first three months of the year. So first, of a profit or money was made, a lot of money was made, and then the company reported it. Now sometimes it is unnecessary to use the perfect infinitive if the time is understandable from the context. So when this happens, you should use the simple infinitive form. So here I have a sentence, and you can see it has the word yesterday. So the time is understandable. I know that something happened yesterday. And what happened yesterday? Well, you called me. So I might say, it was nice of you to have called yesterday. But I don't have to use the perfect infinitive form. I can use the simple infinitive form and say, it was nice of you to call yesterday. So if you can see a difference between the two, this has two events. This has one event you called yesterday. So I can use the simple infinitive form if there's one event and if I have a time word here that's um, specific and I know when it happened. Now let's look at passive infinitives. The formula for passive infinitives is to plus be or get plus the past participle. Now passive infinitives are used to focus on the receiver of the action instead of the performer of the action. And passive infinitives are used when you want to emphasize that the receiver um, or the performer is unimportant, unknown, or obvious. Now we're going to use get when we want to show more emotion and be is used to describe people. Now, passive infinitives following an object can be reduced by omitting to be or to get. Now, let's look at some examples. Examples of passive infinitives. Here's the example. My friend hopes to get promoted soon. Okay, so I'm focusing on the receiver. Okay. Now, this is the active form. My friend hopes they will promote her. Okay. So the passive is focusing on the receiver or when the performer of the action is not important. I can also reduce or admit a passive infinitive. So I'm, I could say I want him to be fired immediately or I can take this out and I can say I want him fired immediately and they will have the same meaning. So once again, passive infinitives are used to focus on the receiver of the action and not the performer of the action. The performer of the action is they, like the company will promote her. But I'm not focusing on the performer, I'm focusing on the receiver. My friend is receiving the promotion. So that's the difference between passive infinitives and active infinitives. And once again, I can take away this by omitting the passive infinitive. And that's the end of this video.